So I, now I need to make a plate that can attach to the motor and can attach to this. Um, so I think I'll use these bolt holes, which means I need a plate mm, about 10 inches by about 11 inches. I got out some thin steel plate, marked my dimensions on there, and then cut it out with a cutoff disc on my angle grinder. Once I had that plate cut out, I placed it on top of the bell housing plate, and then I started taping it in place. I just wanted to make sure that it was roughly centered on here. So if I flip it up, you can see what that looks like underneath. Uh, but because I was going to be marking these holes and I needed to keep alignment with the other plate, I just taped it down and then flipped it over. Now I can use center punches to mark the centers of the holes that I want to drill out. Now we have to do a little bit of magic to find out where center is, and I'm going to do that by having a compass set up to 8 inches. So I just made a mark from the center line of this hole to this hole divided in half, put a mark there, because I kind of stumbled on the fact that the center of the drive shaft is, um, or the crankshaft, is eight inches from here, from here, and from a point centered between those two. So I just crisscrossed these two, and they cross here. So with this last one, if this also crosses, I think I'm doing pretty good. It looks like we got center. And a whiny cat. Now according to the drawing of the motor, the outside ring of holes, uh, it's sort of a weird diameter. It's uh, 149.2 millimeters, which is less than six inches. And if I divide it by two, I get 2.937 inches. That's a weird size, but I set it up on my caliper here so that I could then match up my compass to it. So let's see if I can uh, draw a circle from our center here. So now I gotta equally space four holes around that. I also figured that if these four points were all exactly 90 degrees apart from each other, they should all be equidistant from each other as well. So I used a compass and measured that set distance between them, and it was dead on. I also need a hole in the middle for the drive shaft, about an inch and three quarters, so I divided that in half, set up my compass. And I don't have a metal cutting bit that big, so, I don't know, angle grinder, I guess? Okay, well, it's not going to win any beauty contests, but uh, there's a hole I put in there with the angle grinder, so that'll fit over the drive shaft. And here's the motor we're putting it on. Looks like that'll be good enough. So now I'm drilling my four 3 16 bolt holes here. Um, already pre-drilled them with an eighth, so I'll use the step drill here to get through that. Mm. 
Okay, looks like it'll fit. So now we've got these outside six holes need to be drilled out to half an inch. Okay, the other thing I just did was um, I measured this plate versus the tractor and I, I knew there was going to be a little interference here so I trimmed the bottom a little bit and then I didn't have to but I just cut off the square corners at the top make the plate a little bit smaller and then on the face of the motor here uh, there's this step so these bolt holes are you know, even with the face, and these are back just a hair. So I'm going to put a pair of washers behind the plate to give it a nice, even surface here. So like this, I got one washer on the front, but then two on the back to take up that space. When the first one was easy, <laughs> the rest are going to be a little bit of a pain uh, to get those washers in there. Okay, so this is now bolted down onto the motor, and then on top of that is going the, uh, the bell housing plate. And you'll notice we've got holes that match up between the two, uh, but to make up the space so that the motor is the correct distance away from the driven shaft and the transmission, uh, it's going to have spacers. These are one inch steel spacers. So I'm going to have one of these spacing the plates apart at each of the holes like this. So now with the motor plate in place, the bell housing plate bolted to it. Uh, we need to have a Lovejoy connector here and exactly where this goes matters. And when I did the measurement, it seemed like uh, essentially the back of the Lovejoy had to be even with the back of this plate. So I'm gonna stick a straight edge through here to get it to that height, line that up with this. Uh, line up the keyway. And hopefully that should be where I need it to be. And then on top of that, you get our coupler from the Lovejoy to both sections of spline. That'll go on there like that. And it has a uh, rubber spider between the two parts. And hopefully that also helps take care of any uh, misalignment between the parts because you know there's going to be some. So in theory now this whole thing goes onto the tractor, shaft slides into here, a couple of bolts and it's connected and if not we'll need to make some adjustments to the height here um, and that shaft does not fully in here. I'd like to get that all the way in, but that would mean trimming down these spacers a little bit. And then the other thing is um, I want to make sure we're not too far and end up with the uh, shaft sticking out here. So don't want to mess with uh, cutting down spacers yet if I don't have to. Uh, the one potential issue that I see here is that it's got to go straight in to get onto the shaft. And this might be in the way, and if it is, that's a real pain because I gotta disconnect the uh, steering and everything else support support this. So I'd like to avoid that, but I have a feeling that's gonna be in my way. And in fact, it was in the way. I tried getting it in there, and there was just no way to get everything lined up and get the plate to drop down past that lip. So I'm gonna have to take a different approach. So now it looks like the issue I'm having is the bottom of this plate has to drop into 
almost a slot right here. So it's got to get past all this drop down. But at the same time, we also need this to line up with that. So it's a little bit of a, a catch-22. Okay, so I did manage to wrestle into place the motor, the plate, the transmission plate bolted all together, but I had to do it without the motor um, half of the Lovejoy on there because I just couldn't get them lined up. A big part of it was just this plate can't go straight on. It kind of has to pivot and drop down, which means I can't slide this whole thing right on. So if I could instead leave this on and move this plate separate, that would be great, except the bolt head is on the other side here, so I don't have any way of tightening it down. But um, I also need to change the spacing here, make it a little bit less, so I think I'm going to swap that over for a nut and washers, and that way that nut can hold that bolt on. I can pull these off, I can slop out the hole a little bit, and that'll let me position the motor and then tighten down the bolts to get my center just right. And since the whole thing can come off, I can get this on here, slide the whole thing on, put those nuts on, and I should be good. Okay, I got bolts with uh, washers, nut, and another bolt, and that way uh, the bolts stay on there, and I've got the correct spacing, so now I can just put this on. I overboard these holes here so that there's a little bit of adjustment. So I'll put this on the motor, this on the tractor, and then the motor with this should go straight on and line up the spider couplers. Okay, I got this plate mounted back on. These bolts are coming through from the back, but they're secured with a nut, so um, they're solidly in place, just acting as a, uh, a stud and uh, the correct length spacer. And because of that, now I can just put the motor straight on. And I'm also going to do that with the coupler already in place. And that way, the whole thing can just push straight on. Um, and I don't have to try to line up the Lovejoy or anything. And then all I gotta do is put on the nuts and tighten them down. That's really it when it comes to the adapter plate. Uh, just making sure that everything is centered and still having a way to tweak the center just a little tiny bit and making sure it's the right distance away from the transmission so that the, the shaft goes on nicely, everything's fully engaged, uh, but nothing's rubbing against each other. And there's no reason why next time we can't uh, wire up the motor, apply some power to it, and actually spin the wheels of the tractor. So make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you get to see that video right away when it comes out. Uh, check us out at 300mpg.org. We're also on Patreon and would love your support there as well. We got some extra special fun, cool stuff for uh, patrons over there. And until next time, stay charged up.